Hello there and welcome to a brand new week and a brand new episode of Network Africa right here on Channels Television. I'm Cynthia Rea. We've got a great lineup for you. Now, first up, Burundi rejects a United Nations mediator following the report of the organization which says the parliamentary elections were not credible. Then we bring you updates from Joss following the twin explosions in the central cities. And later on, Egypt continues its crackdown on the Islamic State, killing 25 militants in the process. Again, you're welcome to Network Africa on Channels Television. Now, just before we bring you news from Burundi, let's take a quick look at the top three stories which made headlines over the weekend. Launched airstrikes in North Sinai on Saturday, killing 12 militants. Security sources said, and the Egyptian president visited the restive province where the bloodiest fighting in years erupted earlier this week. The sources said the airstrikes hit militant targets near Sheikh Zuwaid in North Sinai province, killing 12 militants and destroying weapons and explosives. The Tunisian president declared a state of emergency on Saturday, July the 4th, saying the Islamist militant attack on a beach hotel that killed 38 foreigners had left the country in a state of war. Last week's attack, three months after the deadly Islamist assault on the Bardo Museum in Tunis, has shocked the North African country, emerging into a democracy following its 2011 Arab Spring uprising. Tunisians split in their opinions regarding the declaration, with some saying that even though the declaration itself was necessary, it was unlikely to last long. You know, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of uh, issues at stake which cause, um, um, yeah, that, that there is a threat of terrorism which you will not be able to tackle by just expressing uh, the state of emergency and by uh, giving more rights to the Tunisian army. French parliamentarian Jean-Frédéric Poisson toward a detention center for illegal migrants on the outskirts of the Libyan capital Tripoli on Saturday, July the 4th, in a visit he said was aimed at better understanding and resolving the illegal migration problem. The visit came about a week after Libya's internationally recognized government said it would send a delegation to discuss with the European Union proposals to curb migrant smuggling from the North African coast. The first one is trying to understand how migrants come here. Now, topping our news today is what's happening in Burundi. The East African country has rejected a second UN diplomat who was listed to help resolve the country's political crisis. The reason behind the move is that the country says the crucial report released about last week's parliamentary elections demonstrated bias. The rejection of Abdullaye Batili came in response to a UN report saying its mission in Burundi had observed restrictions on media freedoms, arbitrary detentions, and acts of violence around the June 29 vote. Burundi's ruling coalition blamed Batili for the report. Now, many analysts have suggested that the best way to tackle the Burundi crisis is for regional talks to hold. The president, Nkurunziza, does not appear to share that view as he opted to skip the regional talks holding today. The ongoing East Africa community talks holding in Dar es Salaam aims to broker a deal to end weeks of unrest in the country. However, the president chose to campaign for his controversial, th controversial third term instead. Unfortunately, Burundians continue to pay the price for President Nkurunziza's third-term bid. Many of them who have been fleeing the violence, specifically in the capital, Bujumbura, are still facing the threat of cholera. The situation has become so dire that the United Nations has introduced an awareness program to stem cholera outbreak affecting the refugees in Tanzania. Well, for more what's happening in Burundi or an analysis, we're joined on the program by African news analyst, Mr. Warwick Oyema. He joins us from London. Mr. Oyema, thank you very much for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you. It's, uh, and I'd just like to start by asking you, now that Burundi has rejected the United Nations mediator, 
What message is it sending to the international community? Well, the message is very simple, and that is that the important uh, Nkuron visa has the intention of going ahead with his own political agenda, which is to establish him himself as a president for the third term. Well, regional talks are holding in Dar es Salaam to try to broker a deal to end the violence in the country, that's in Burundi, and President Nkurunzi is not in attendance and is focusing on his campaign instead. Is this a show of defiance or a display of fear of being toppled, as was the case in the past? No, it's neither. <coughs> it, it is a show that uh, mediation and political interventions are of not the slightest use whatsoever. That's what it shows. Nkurunziza, I think, is fairly confident that he can control the situation within his own country to get himself elected as president. That's what all this is aiming towards. Now, just, be, just before we got on the program, we did see um, what, a, what a general, I believe, had to say, saying the only way to end the crisis is to oust the president. Do you share that view? Uh, in fact, I'll go further. I would say the only way to, um, to resolve the crisis is for some country to threaten to invade and kill Nkurunziza and all his supporters unless he got the hell out of the country. Then you would get his attention. Okay, Mr. Ahmed, just before I let you go, based on the gestures I asked you about earlier on concerning the UN mediator being rejected and also Mr. Nkurunziza not attending the regional talks holding in Dar es Salaam, do you think that those moves could lead or could have a boomerang effect on Burundi in the future? Well, it would make it um, a bit of a pariah state, but unless they are backed up with punitive sanctions of a kind that will bring the country to its knees, then they're not of the slightest use whatsoever. Hmm. Well, Mr. Warwick Oyema, thank you very much. As always, it's been a pleasure having you join us right here on Network Africa. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Mr. Warwick Ohima speaking to us from London. He is an African news analyst. Well, coming up on Network Africa, we bring you the latest on the twin blasts in the central Nigerian city of Jos.